just make sure nothing falls off during the talk. Okay, so uh, the title of this talk is On the Expressive Power of Deep Learning, Tensor Analysis. This is joint work with Or Sharir and Amnon Shashua from the Hebrew University. So just like talks before me, uh, this talk focuses on expressiveness and hopefully... It's too loud? This way? Is that better? Okay, so uh, arguably the success of deep learning is fueled by its expressive power. Okay, the ability to express a rich class of functions with few parameters through compositionality. Okay, and a related concept which actually applies to the talks that were here for me is we call it depth efficiency. This refers to a situation where we have a deep network of polynomial size and it computes a function that cannot be replicated by a shallow network if the latter does not have super polynomial or exponential size. Okay, so both of the excellent talks that were here before me actually deal with this. So this is how we call it. And uh, what differentiates our works, our work from uh, previous works on depth efficiency is, first of all, most of them show existence of functions, okay, either of one or, or of a few, but they don't treat the question of how frequent these functions are. And secondly, they do not apply to convolutional networks, which is something that we focus on. Okay, that's locality, weight sharing, and pooling. This is something that we focus on, and primarily because it is, in practice, possibly the most successful deep learning architecture to date. Okay, so the architecture that we focus on, we call it convolutional arithmetic circuits. Okay, these are convolutional networks. There are hidden layers with convolution, pooling, convolution, pooling. Everything collapses, and then there is a linear layer. So it's a convolutional network in the sense of locality, weight sharing, and pooling. The difference between this and the most common type of convolutional networks is that there is no pointwise activation, and the nonlinearity comes from pooling. So it's an arithmetic circuit. Now you may ask, okay, this is not the thing that works in practice, but actually this is equivalent to SimNets, which is a new deep learning architecture that ha is showing promising results on visual recognition benchmarks, and it will be presented next week in CVPR. And in the end of the talk, I'll also say th something about convolutional networks that are just the ones that people use with ReLU activation. Okay, so for this type of networks, it's not that difficult to show that the functions computed by these networks can be expressed in the following form. All right, x1 to xn here, these are the input patches that compose an input. And the details are not that important here. What is important to see is that a function computed by the network can be expressed as a linear combination of an exponential number of basis functions. Okay, there's an exponential number of possibilities here and a function computed by the network is a linear combination over these. And the coefficients of the linear combination are naturally could be naturally arranged in a tensor, in a multidimensional array. And because everything here is polynomial, each entry of the tensor will just be a polynomial over the weights of the network, okay, the weights in the convolutional layer. So a function realized by a network can be expressed as a linear combination over an exponentially large basis and the coefficients reside in the coefficient tensor. And the key observation here is that actually the, the network computes this function by applying a tensor decomposition to this coefficient tensor. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the structure of the network and the type of tensor decomposition that underlies there. So now I'll go through two canonical examples. The first one is a shallow network. This is just like we had before, except there is only one hidden layer. It's a special case. We have global pooling here in a single hidden layer, and apparently in this case, the coefficient tensor is given by a very classic tensor decomposition, which is called a CP decomposition. It's very simple. The tensor is given by a linear combination of rank one tensors. What is a rank one tensor? It's just an outer product between multiple vectors. Okay? So in this case, the rank of this tensor is, will not be more than the number of terms here. Okay, just like in matrices, the rank of a tensor is defined to be the minimal number of rank one tensor that can, when summed up, can produce that tensor. Okay, so I'll get back to rank later with the central theorem. But the basic idea here is shallow network, classic CP decomposition. Let's move on to a deep network. Consider, for example, the case where we have a deep network and each pooling window covers two entries. Okay, in this case, the decomposition of the coefficient tensor is the hierarchical Tucker decomposition. Okay, this is something relatively new. It was introduced in 2008 by Hackbush and Kuhn. The details here are not that important. What is important is that this decomposition is 
created incrementally. All right, tensors of increasing orders, of increasing dimensions are created hierarchically. And actually, that is what a deep network does. Okay, so now that we have the equivalence between convolutional arithmetic circuits and tensor decompositions, we can study the fun their function spaces and prove quite uh, pretty strong results. So the central theorem that we prove is that the rank of a tensor that is given by hierarchical Tucker is exponential in the size of the input almost everywhere with respect to the decomposition parameters. Okay, decomposition parameters can be thought of as, as uh, comprising a Euclidean space. We could treat this as a measure space and ask when this happens, and apparently this happens almost always. Now, since the rank of a tensor generated by CP decomposition is no more than the number of terms, as I said, and the number of terms corresponds to the number of hidden channels in a shallow network, we have the following result. If we take a deep network and randomize its convolutional weights by any continuous distribution, with probability 1, we will get a function that cannot be realized by a shallow network that does not have an exponential size. Actually, it cannot even be approximated. But I'm not getting into that, these details here. And what this means is that, in this case, depth efficiency holds almost always. So it's a very strong result. It says essentially everything that a deep network computes, a shallow network cannot compute efficiently. Okay, so let's briefly go through the idea of the proof. So what we do here is we, we would like to show that the rank of a tensor is very high. The way we do it is we view the tensor as, mat as a matrix. We arrange it as a matrix. This is the matricization operator. We use the Kronecker product for matrices, and the Kronecker product for matrices, as some of you might know, is something that increases ranks multiplicatively. So the rank of A Kronecker product B is equal to the rank of A times the rank of B. Now, the Kronecker product is actually the same thing as a tensor product, just under matrix viewpoint. So if we have A tensor product B and matricize this, this is equal to the matricization of A Kronecker product matricization of B. This can be used to show that if A is expressed in this form, meaning the rank of A is no, the tensor rank of A is no more than Z, then the rank of its matricization will be no more than Z as well. Therefore, it is enough to show that the rank of the matricization is very high. And we do this by induction over the levels of hierarchical Tucker. And the basic step there is that we have chronicle products that increase the rank multiplicatively. And then there are a lot of technical issues to make sure that this happens almost always. But this is the basic idea. And um, we generalize this result. We don't only compare single hidden layer to log two of the size of the input hidden layers. We actually have it, it for a generalized results, result for arbitrary depths. And we show there that the penalty that one has to pay to maintain representational power is double exponential with respect to the number of layers that are cut off. Okay, so let's conclude. So first of all, we've shown through tensor decompositions that depth efficiency holds almost always with convolutional arithmetic circuits. And more importantly, the equivalence between convolutional networks and tensor decompositions is something that can be used for many other applications. I'll give here two examples. So first of all, we applied the, this analysis to convolutional RAYU networks. This was shown in ICML just now. We show their quite surprising result. For example, the average pooling leads to loss of universality and the depth efficiency there, it exists and it might be frequent, but it's never, it doesn't hold almost always. And even more importantly, this is something new on archive. We use this to analyze not only, not only show that deep networks can do things that shallow can't, but also say why these things are interesting. Okay, so we focus on the correlations that the functions, that functions can model and show that deep networks can model correlation between certain regions of the input, whereas shallow networks can't. And uh, this is something that we would like to be able to do. And we also show that the type of correlations that a deep network can model they can't model a strong correlation between any regions. It has to select which reason, regions it can model correlation for. And the pooling geometry of the network, that determines which regions are supported. And standard pooling geometry, that is something that supports correlation between entangled regions. So it kind of shows you how the inductive bias, how these networks encode the inductive bias that is intuitive for us and what we'd expect for natural images. But the bottom line here is that this equivalence, this tool, is possibly more important than the result that we've uh, shown here. So, uh, thank you.